Hi, I'm Becky from Big Owls, and I'm here today to talk to you about the jewel of the Orient, otherwise known as the Siamese fighting fish or the betta. Siamese fighting fish go way back, all the way to when the Siam was called Siam. Now, we just call them the common betta. They are fighters, they are very territorial. They're a labyrinth gill fish, so they come from areas of the world where the, the water uh, oxygen levels are very low, so they've developed this sort of a, a folded, rich in blood vessel organ in their gills that allows them to absorb extra oxygen from the surface, which is really kind of cool. This one is a crown tail male. As you can tell, he's a really nice peachy sort of orange color. Back in the day, it used to be uh, really rare to get a nice orange color betta. Crown tails are one of the earliest renditions of the betta fins. These are the jumbo play cats. You can see this guy here, he's a lot bigger. Uh, they look a lot more similar to their wild type cousins. They're not usually super bright, they're not usually super vibrant, um, but they do have that enormous body shape. And it's all through selective breeding, selective crossing of different kinds of bettas to get these uh, different shapes. This is called a Dumbo ear. Uh, they don't really have super impressive tails usually. Um, this guy is no exception, but his pectoral fins are just amazing. And uh, I mean, they're, they're half the size of his body. You probably want to go with a, a tank that's not too deep, um, low flow, lots of plants for them to rest on, keep them nice and happy, uh, keep them nice and, and, and healthy as well. You can keep a betta in a small container, something like this, uh, but that's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be a lot of stress on your fish. Um, it's not going to last as long. If you keep your fish in a nice heated, filtered aquarium, five to 10 gallons, you can get upwards of 10 years out of your fish. A larger aquarium is more stable, has a healthier ecosystem, and it also gives you the nice option of being able to put other different kinds of fish in with your betta and have a nice little community tank with your, with your betta being the main man of the tank. This is Sipora betta water. Betta water is really great. It's got all kinds of really good skin conditioners in there. It's pH balance, mimics the natural habitat of the fish. Um, and this is just a, an all around, it's a really great product. Uh, whether you're using a larger aquarium or if you have a smaller bowl like one of these guys here. So if betta water is not your flavor, I have this awesome product, it's called Prime by Seachem. Seachem's an awesome manufacturer. Uh, Prime breaks down not only excess amounts of ammonia, uh, it also breaks down a little bit of your, uh, your nitrates as well, and you wanna keep those nitrates in check. We also do carry a Prime type water conditioner also by Seachem. This one's specifically for bettas. I also have this product here. This is a standard uh, betta water conditioner. It's been on the market forever. This is a really easy product. It's just a couple drops. Uh, makes your tap water nice and safe for your betta. It does have a little bit of skin conditioner in there as well, which will help to keep your skin, your fish's skin nice and clean and healthy. So that's another product you can use. If you have a larger aquarium with a community fish setup, uh, five, 10 gallons as well. We do have the Big Owls brand. This is our standard water conditioner. Works out roughly to one teaspoon for every 10 gallons. So it is pretty easy to do water changes with this product. It's got lots of really great skin conditioners in there. It, it's not an expensive product. And it's something that I always recommend having on hand. So it's really important that you do make sure that you're using a proper water conditioner. Um, something that breaks down some of that excess of ammonia uh, if, you're, if you're in a bowl situation because those ammonia levels, they can rise rather quickly. And the last step of setting up your aquarium for your betta, this is really, really, really important. And preferably you would have this stuff put in inside of your aquarium well before you put your fish in. This is our multi-purpose bacteria. This is nitrifying bacteria. A couple things happen when you, when you put a fish inside of an aquarium. Uh, they start to produce waste and ammonia levels start to rise. And then this bacteria breaks down the ammonia into different, less toxic forms. You want to start thinking about what you want to feed your fish. 
Um, bettas are carnivores, so you want to definitely make sure that you have a nice, high-protein food for them. I use Omega-1. Omega-1 is a really high quality food. It's got 42% crude protein in there. I would recommend this for, for anybody, especially if you have a picky betta. This is a delicious food for them. My second favorite is gonna be your Hikari brand. This is Hikari Betta Bio Gold. This is a really high quality product as well. And they've been in the fish industry for a very long time. You wanna keep an eye on this one. I have noticed that bettas do get quite fat while eating this, so you want to sort of maybe limit the food on the on these ones, maybe you know four to six kibbles a day, uh, and that'll keep your fish nice and healthy. So if you're like me and you like to spoil your fish, we have an excellent product available at Big Al's. This is called Betta Dialet Treat. It has all kinds of you, you get you get blood worms, frozen blood worms, you get daphnia, you get mice of shrimp. Um, all of these are really nice, high quality, meaty foods. Comes with a cute little spoon so you can go ahead, you can divvy out an appropriate amount of food for your fish. Um, what you want to do though is you want to feed this dial a treat in place of your standard kibble or your standard pellet. Um, once again, you don't want to overfeed your betta. Your betta's stomach's only the size of his one eyeball. So that's why it's really important not to give them too much food, too much treats. You can overfeed a betta, just keep that in mind. Uh, the two most common reasons why these fish end up dying is obesity and improper water conditions, both which go hand in hand with overfeeding. All right guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I had a great time, I hope you did too. Hope you guys learned something today. As always, links for our products are in the description below. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and keep on tanking.